Hey everybody, this is Matt Shu from Upright Health and today I want to talk with you about how the success of hip surgeries for hip impingement is measured and what that means for you when you're considering whether a surgery is a good option for treating hip impingement. Uh, this was inspired by a conversation I had with a guy online who strongly disagreed with my position and asked me, well, if, Matt, if your position is correct, why are there studies that show that hip surgeries for hip impingement result in 85% of patients getting improvement in their hips? So I have looked into these studies and what you will find if you want to look into them as well is there is this thing that is used to objectively measure uh, the success of hip surgeries. And so this thing is called the Harris Hip Score and it's a questionnaire, a fairly short questionnaire that attempts to give you an objective measure of whether or not somebody got better from the surgery. Uh, in general, the, the, the uh, measuring stick, right, the thing you, that you're going for is um, an improvement in the score of 20 points minimum. So you can actually go online, I'm going to provide the link for you to go play with the Harris Hip Score questionnaire yourself, and go see how these points uh, can be earned and see just how the Harris Hip Score doesn't actually line up with what I think most people's expectations would be. So uh, what you'll notice when you go play with the Harris Hip Score is that there are a couple sections and the section that deals with actual range of motion of your hip joint, the one that actually gives you points for um, how well your hip joint articulates in terms of rotation, extension, flexion, what you'll find with that is that you get very few points for improvements in hip range of motion. So in fact, it's actually a waste of time to even look at those in terms of the Harris Hip Score, which is why there's a thing called the Modified Harris Hip Score, which actually leaves those things out of the questionnaire um, and still gets used to determine whether surgery is effective or not. So, in fact, when you look at the questionnaire, what you'll see is that there is one question that gets a very, very heavy weighting where you can very easily get 20 points. And then there are a couple other questions that can earn you extra points as well. And even if you earn a whole bunch of extra points on the Harris Hip Score, um, when you're comparing your pre-op and post-op scores, even if you have earned a bunch of points, you may actually still not have that big of an improvement in the quality of your life. Certainly not what you would say a full cure is. So when you go play with this, I encourage you to look at the first question and look at the pain question, right? The pain question has um, five different responses, five different levels of pain. The worst one is basically you just don't do anything but take drugs and try to get through that level of suffering. Right? You take strong medicines and that's pretty much your life. The next best one is severe pain. That's where you're able to do some stuff but you're still taking um, strong painkillers to get around. Then you can go moderate which is in certainly not anywhere you want to be but still better than severe in that debilitated state. So that's where you're taking strong medications when necessary, you take aspirin pretty often, and you can do some stuff, um, some daily stuff. Then you have slight, where you're just taking some aspirin. Uh, you might need stronger stuff if you are doing things that are out of the ordinary. Uh, it's unclear what out of the ordinary might mean, but I'm taking it to mean things like sports, right? Um, and then finally, and this is really very bizarre response that's available, your best answer is none, which is, that, make, that part makes sense. So you have none, right, no pain, that's great, or ignores it. So I want you to think about that. If I say to you that 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I had the surgery. Uh, I still have pain, but I can ignore it. Is that the same thing to you as none? Okay, I, those are not equivalent, right? None or ignores it. Those are very different things, right? I could have uh, a pretty good amount of pain and still be able to ignore it and do other things. That's not really, uh, not really deserving of a top score, right? That is influenced heavily by whether or not I have the mental fortitude or I believe I should or what many factors, psychological factors, um, would come into play when we're talking about whether or not I can just ignore the pain, right? If the pain is low enough, I can ignore it, but does that mean that your surgery really helped me if I learned to ignore a problem? Probably not, I wouldn't say so. So the thing is, um, if we look at the number of points we can earn within this section, it's really, really fascinating. So essentially, if you go from any level of severity, if you go one level better, you have already earned 10 points. If you go two points better, so if I go from debilitating pain to uh, moderate pain, I have already earned 20 points. Okay, so if I am in severe pain and I go two rungs to slight pain, I have already earned 20 points and by the Harris Hip Score objective measurement, the surgery was a success. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is this an accurate reflection of success for somebody with hip pain? I think most people would say, if I'm in pain and you manage and your cure only reduces my pain, then your cure is not a cure, it is in some way incomplete, right? There's something about it that does not fully address the problem. Now, uh, there's other issues here. So let's say we only go from one run. I could also go severe pain to moderate pain, earn 10 points. Now, there, now let's look at the other questions. If I were to reduce my limp by one rung, so I could have severe limp, I could have a moderate limp or a slight limp. If I reduce my limp, I earn, uh, sorry, I'm going off the top of my head, I believe it was six points for one rung um, improvement on my limp. Um, so right there, I already have 16 points, right? Um, there's also a question about, um, about whether or not you have to use a, a cane, right? So if I go from using a cane uh, to using a cane only occasionally, I also earn extra points. I forgot, I really should have written this down, I apologize, but you can find it um, on the Harris Hip Score. Um, you'll also earn extra points. So. If you earn six points there, another five, six points there, you've already gotten 20 points and the surgery is a success. So again, you need to ask yourself, what is the true measure of success? Is it just a slight improvement in a couple different metrics that means success to you? Or is it an actual ability to do things without pain in a wide variety of activities without pain. I would say that the Harris Hip Score, if that's what you're using to judge improvement, you are not really measuring success for, from a patient's perspective, from a human being's perspective. What you're measuring is just arbitrary numbers that are somewhat loosely related to improvement, but that don't accurately reflect a true cure or true fix for what's going on with people's hips. So that, I think, is what is what is reflected in these studies. They say, well, you've got, you know, you've got improvement in the hip score, therefore it's a success. But the actual hip score is not measuring the right things. So what you have is just bad data. So I do encourage you to go play with the Harris hip score, go see how you can earn points on there, and see whether it makes any sense to you.
I hope that gives you some, some perspective and I hope that helps you out. And I hope that you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.